everybody. We are going to do a little bit of a fish fry tonight. It's going to be, a, sometimes I call them market to meal because I didn't actually catch this. But we went to the market. We actually went down the street. And down on the street in the Philippines, in like the province, and even in the city, they got little vendors that have a little cocoa wood table about the size of this blue plastic here, and they and they have some fish there, and they sell it. And they start selling them like 4 p.m. or so. They bring all the fish out. Well, we bought some of these there. We bought this one on the street for 160 per kilo. This is a uh, parrotfish, or also called a mole mole here. We got this one on the street, just the corner by where we live for 180 per kilo. We got these two on the street. This is a momo or a parrot fish. These are my favorite two, two fish. They're very white, flinky fish. They're, they're, I love them. These are like emerald snappers is what I call them. They're like a green, they have a green tint to them. And they have like a snapper face. Even though this one's face looks different than that one's face. I don't know, those two different fish? I don't know. They look similar, but not exactly alike. And this is a Pandawan or Cobia. It's a small one. And the hook is still in the mouth. You see the hook right there? So I'm going to have to surgically remove that one. So for now, I'm going to start cleaning these bad boys. And I guess I'll start with the Pandawan first because we had him. We, this one we got at the market for 200 pesos per kilo at the market. So this is on the street, this is on the street, and this is on the street. 160, 180, 220, and 200 at the mar market. The market for these fish was like 280 or something. They were really high. Uh, so we got lucky getting these on, on the street for the price we did. And this one in the market, 200, I'm surprised it was that low price, but yeehaw, yeehaw for me. All right, everybody. Uh Normally, or now that I have a new uh, Acaso Flaca GoPro camera, I would normally put it on my head, but that's back at Cebu where I'm working on my boat, and we're in battalion right now. So, this is the Cobia, or the Pandawan, as they call it here in Cebu. And I'm just going to start in, and again, you know, we're going to fillet these bad boys. The fish is going in their eye. They couldn't get it out, but I'm not going to deal with that now because I'm not going to do anything with the head at this point in time. But the head, it's pretty hard there. So we got to kind of work our way around and try to find the meat on this thing. And see, there's a bunch of meat right here. Well, yeah, piece of meat. Okay, so we're going to kind of separate. Well, let me see, when they get them here, they don't... A lot of people will here cook their fish with the guts inside, and so they don't always gut fish. And so when you ask them to gut the fish, they look kind of like they don't know how to do it. And it's like, well, come on, you've been eating fish your whole life. Why don't you know how to gut one? But like I said, they don't always gut their fish here. So uh, it's just one of those things. Okay, so I'm going to go in here on this uh, little anal fin. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? and work my way down again on the little backbone thing right here see they they've got a long fin going here all the way down to their tail you see that so you can follow that that fin bone line into hopefully the spine and not uh, miss any of the meat so okay so i'm going to kind of go over well Okay, I got the bottom done. So now I'm going to start back at the top. Usually they start at the top, and I don't know. I'm just like I said, I'm a little out of practice here. I need to hold this off. Also, watch out. These guys have got these little dinosaur spikes on the back of their, uh, right here. And if you grab them, those things will stick you. So if you grab them, grab them from the belly side like that, not from the front side. A lot of the fish will grab there and push down the thing, but these don't grab them there. So I'm going to come in here where this fin is and try to work my way along these little dinosaur stegosaurus bones. If you know what a stegosaurus is, that was a dinosaur that had little plates sticking up from its back. 
And if you guys ever, if you ever want to be like an archaeologist, might know a little bit about the dinosaur stuff like that. But I doubt they're related. Of course, you never know. Could be Stegosaurus family here. Okay. So, as you see, I'm just working my way along the spine. And it's got a pretty big spine here. This cobia does. And I've already cut in on the other side to the spine here. So I just have to basically go over, over the spine. I actually can run down the top of the spine and voila, cut that out. And now I can follow it down. I can keep it your hand there and hold that. Good thing I got a lovely assistant here to help hold this thing because it's a little slippery. And there's the bones, the rib bones. So again, as I've, you've seen my other market to meal, filleting fish things, serrated edge here. Uh, I watch a video channel called uh, Landshark, and he's uh, kind of like a sponsor, or he's getting some kind of uh, thing with Dexter Knives, and what they're doing, they're actually putting a serrated edge on the back of the knife here, and that's handy. Uh, that's out of the way, and it's kind of nice to have it there instead of here because you limit the length of your blade. I mean, this is a pretty long blade here. I don't know if it's a 10 or so inch blade, but still, if you're going to uh, be cutting the uh, no skin off of the fish, uh, it's nice to have extra straight blade on this side. But if you're going to be cutting ribs, you need a serrated blade somewhere. So we got that side off. And that looks good. I'm going to, the thing too here is on this countertop, you see this here, this lip, it's raised up. So when you want to uh, slice all the meat off, you need to lay down flat, level with the fish. So I'm going to switch to the shorter knife because I'm not hitting here with this short blade. See the difference, we got about three inch, two and a half, three inch difference. So. It's my first time to use this knife as a fillet knife, but it seems to be doing the job. And keep in mind, this is a cobia or pendawin, and they have really thick skin. So uh, it, they're a little bit easier you know, to get the skin off. And, and I'm kind of coming in, I'm losing the piece, this top piece here because uh, I didn't cut off the ribs and stuff. And so this is not as, oh, and I got that fin in the way too. So there, so yeah, we got a little bit of a little sashimi here that I'm not gonna eat because this ain't my fish and I don't know where it's been, but voila, we got that much off. I need to cut this uh, fin out up here because that don't go there. That was just uh, one of my out of practice mistakes. But again, the serrated edge does its job. There we go. Got it. Yeah, nothing but bone. Okay, so what I should have done was got these ribs out of here first. And then the fish would have laid a lot more flat. And then I could have skinned the underside a little bit easier, a little bit better. And the other thing we got here too is we got the pin bones connected to the rib bone. So this line of pin bones here is joined to the rib bones. So when you try to go under the rib bones, you can't because they're connected to these vertical pin bones. I need to get that part out of my way also and the other thing we got these big plastic cutting mats here battle mat uh what was it metro grand gaisano grand okay gaisano grand mall and they're only 30 pesos each so i should have bought like five or six of them i only bought two i don't know why i only bought two but they're really handy for cut for working on bigger 
bigger things because the other cutting boards we got are maybe half this size cutting uh, uh, mats. That's called a cutting mat. Okay, so we got. those uh some of these there's one or two little uh they called pin bones get them out of here so they're connected to the ribs and different fish are connected in different ways and so when you go between fish and you'll see that as we fillet these other ones We'll do one or two of the other ones. I'll just do this half of this one and I'll, uh, on camera so you can see what I'm doing here. And then we will uh, do half of the one of each of the other ones the same way. You can kind of see there's a little bit of differences in how the meat attaches to the bones and the sizes of the bones and all that kind of stuff. So. the rib going deep into the meat there and in here the ribs don't go so deep you can see them that's right there I'm actually cutting them out kind of one by one kind of like little toothpicks because it seems to work better that way there we go now I can get well, well they're still going deep into the meat there so let's keep taking them out like ribs like toothpicks there's one there. There's one right behind it. We got a few more pin bones here too, so yeah, so these are getting more shallow, a little bit easier to easier to work through. Another one. Ow. Stuck myself. Gotta be careful. These things are sharp, pointy, and not very forgiving. So if you have a you know sharp well, fillet knife, which you better have. Watch your fingers. <laughs> I just poked my eye and hurt myself, but I felt it. Definitely felt it. Okay, so now I got the pin bones out and the ribs. Yeah, there we go. Pin bones and ribs. Now I got two choices. I can either split this here and have two smaller pieces, or I can slice it, which I think I'm just going to slice it. I think I'm going to leave it in a bigger piece right here see like that that's one big piece this is the bloodline too I'm going to shave that out of there also but now I've got this thing separated now I can go back and kind of fix my I'll use a smaller knife again because I can get more flat it was working great until I got to the rib section where it made the fish curl and not lay flat and then I couldn't couldn't skin flat there we go. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. We have this little teeny patch. It's just off of here. The skin. Voila. And I felt a little, another little wood bone. Another little pin bone somewhere. But I was touching this. Oh. Right here. There's a little one right there. One little tiny one. Get that bad boy out of, out of there. Yeah, normally my wife will do the quality control on these things. So when she uh, prepares them for freezing or what have you, she'll run her fingers through all, you know, cleaning them, rinsing them. So you know, naturally she's touching all the areas. And there's another little tiny bone in here that I have no idea where it's coming from, but. The whole plant here is boneless, boneless, skinless. So, bone's got to go like a rib, but it's going <laughs> the wrong direction. And you, you, you need a little pair of needle and little pliers to grab this thing. There we go. Now I'm getting it. Now I'm making some progress. Okay, here we go. Here. There it is. Got that rascal. Okay, the other thing I would have done here is uh, get all of the uh, bloodline. Well, his bloodline here, right here. I'm going to shave that off because that's a nasty fish taste. And if you watch my other 
funny videos. I believe that's where, you know, it's a fish has mercury, well, I think that's where it is. This is in the bloodline because it tastes like that. It tastes kind of funky like that. And I may, I may want to split this because it's easier to get that bloodline out. So here we go. I'm splitting it. Change, change of plans here. Splitting this now so I can get in here and get that bloodline out pretty easy. Just kind of slide the knife. And this, I think, is a sharper knife. Better for shaving. Yeah. This is just shaving it right off. Just a little corner along the edge here where that bloodline is. But like I said, it's really fishy. And everybody should shave that stuff off if you want really nice tasting fish. Really sweet. Sweet tasting fish. And Kobe is really oily. My hands are like really oily right now. I can really feel the oil, which is really a good, a good thing. Now here we got more of a wider bloodline, but it's just really thin. You can see I'm just shaving just a, it's a very little bit off of here, and the bloodline just is gone. Until you get to the edge here, to the center part, and then it thickens up a little bit. And then you just work it off. Not, not as graceful as I'd like to be, but nonetheless, getting the job done. I'm going to have a, a fillet table after I get my boat and stuff. I got to get all set up because right now I'm working on this cabinet, and this is a Filipino height cabinet, and I'm six feet tall. And I'm having to bend over <laughs> like uh, put your back. You can uh, like you're working about half the height you want to work at. So done deal. This one here is uh, a nice piece. This is the belly part here. Oh, here's some of those pin bones right here. Yeah. Okay. Let's get those bad boys out of there. You don't need them. We don't want them. We don't eat bones. Cats and dogs might eat bones, but we don't eat bones. And the good thing is where the pin bones is is also the bloodline. So as you cut pin bones out, you're also getting the smidge into that bloodline out of there too. Okay. is it? No, my imagination. Just my imagination. And I got to do a little skin in here. I got to cut this jaw out. And we got some jaw bone in here. And I'm coming in where this fin is and I'm making do some skinning and some finning at the same time. I think my wife's going to want that for some soup. Get this, uh, get some more. Oh, that's a rip there. Kind of hard to distinguish where I'm working right now. But, uh, sweating up a storm, I'll tell you that much. There you go. Let me try to shave this off of here if I can without shaving any skin off of my finger a little bit more right here so there's a bone there's another little bone right in here and Kobe's not a bony fish it's just that's the way I'm approaching it is not the best way to start normally I, I do a much larger fish and so things are not so tiny 
you know, tiny little pin bones and stuff like that that you got to deal with. Here we go. Get this bloodline out of here. Okay. My wife is going to get some ice now and put on these fish pieces we have. So she's going to have to put the camera down and I'm going to switch to the, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and do the other side. I probably should have done this side off camera, that side on camera because it would uh, look a little bit better. Bone free. Yeehaw. All right, we did that half. So I'm going to do the other half. And uh, she's going to get some ice. Fill that up with ice because you want your fish to stay fresh. And they don't ice the fish. Well, at the market, they actually do ice the fish. They come in styrofoam boxes full of ice. So in the market, they actually do ice fish. And on the street, uh, they probably ice them. But by the time you get to them, they're just laying on a table, hopefully in the shade. Okay, so we'll be back. And I'll, I'm going to do the other side, see if we get the ice, and then we'll start on one of these momoles or one of these emerald snappers. And we'll be back with more for my paradise on the Italian island. Bye for now. All right, everybody. We're going in on the momo now. And we got the Kobe all done. He's all over here sitting on ice. We got to still rinse him off and stuff. That's just keeping him cold while we're doing working on these other fish. And so I'm coming in under this fan here. And uh, these things got really big scales. So people, uh, again, I haven't filleted a momo in a couple of years, so bear with me. I'm gonna figure out where the meat is, where the bones are, and what's the best angle of attack for this thing. They got him with the spear gun, you see that? There's a spear. So the cobia was caught on a on a fishing line, probably like a long line, and uh, there was the hook still stuck in his mouth. They couldn't get the hook out, so I, my wife just pulled the hook out. But uh, yeah, so people will take these fish with these scales, a lot of scales, and they will get in there like that, and they'll they call it outline it they just slice it like that come down here they're not really getting all the way into the spine here they're just kind of avoiding the uh, having to scale it which I don't want to do because scales fly all over the place so let's see if I can uh, come in here and and we got to gut this thing too so let's see if we can Oh, actually, my knife's cutting right through this, right through the uh, scales on the belly. So I'm going to come in here along the side of the belly a little bit and try to open it up. Like that, like that. The other thing we can do is we come in from here and you know, follow those vertical rib bones. And again, I really love momo it's, it's a really nice white flaky meat moist and really good flavor it says my favorite fish in hawaii they call this the king's fish and only the king was allowed to eat these so that tells you something about how good they probably <laughs> taste and i'm trying to come in here and uh Uh, work around these ribs so I don't have to get into the guts. So if I can come here and work over the rib cage, and I don't know if I can on the momo or not, but I would have liked to have done that on the copia too. So I had to get in a little deeper here where I made my first cut. There we go. And then just follow the ribs, see with the tip of the knife. And uh, that way we don't even have to get into where the guts are. We can just uh, trim the meat right off the ribs. 
a lot of times they'll they'll actually cut uh, just basically right. Let me get that fin out of the way. Just right through here because there's no meat on the ribs of some of these fish. It's just bones. Now, this is the Texas filet style. You see where I just didn't cut through? I just flipped it. And then we come back and do the skin them with this knife here. And voila, boom, done deal. No bloodline. You see that? There ain't no bloodline. Uh, we do have some pin bones. So I'm going to take those out. They're right here. They're little tiny ones again, so sometimes you don't notice it until you start eating it that you had pin bones. But these ones here, I can definitely feel they're there. It's a big enough fish. Smaller fish may have little tiny hair like pin bones. Okay, so that, my friends, is how quick and easy. It is. Look at that meat. Just white, white, white. Clear. It's like a transparent kind of a look there. And I got a few scales here, so my wife will wash that off. But yeah, we're boneless. We're done. So that's half of that. And the other half, we do the same thing. I'm not going to do these ones. I'm going to show you these right now on camera because uh, this is the same step. So I'm going to finish with this guy. Do the other side of him. And then we... We'll go to the cooking part, and we'll be back with more cooking up some Momo, some Emerald Snapper, and some Cobia. Bye for now. All right, everybody. As you see, we filleted them all up. These my wife's going to use for fish head soup, and it's a mishmash of fish. Like I said, it's the uh, Cobia. It's or Pendawan, as they call it here. It's the uh, Momo, or parrotfish. Momo is what they call it here. And the other one's called what? Tombok? Tombok and uh, Tombok. Uh, Tombok? K -E -T -A -T -A -T -A. Katombok. Katombok. Okay, that's what I call an emerald snapper. Uh, so that's the heads, and this is all of the place. And we got them all done. She's going to, because these aren't rinsed and everything, they're just on ice, keeping cool. So she's going to clean that, transfer it to uh, on ice. Uh, clean and spotless and then she's going to do some kind of a fish head soup with that. I got all the guts and stuff in here, skins and fins and, well, not fins, not all the fins, they're obviously fins, but that's for my chum. So I'm going to get a food processor at some point and uh, I'm saving all these pieces and I'm going to, because, you know, I'm building my boat. So I'm going to need uh, some chum and that's going to be my chum. So we We'll be back with more from my paradise on the tiny line. And boy, that's a bunch of fillets right there. Bye for now. Hey, everybody. Well, I kind of forgot, got wrapped up in the job here. What we did, we took some mayo and some soy sauce and some homemade teriyaki sauce that I made. And we mixed it all up in there for the kind of like a marinade for the fish. So. We'll see what that does. And then we took breadcrumbs and flour, like a roughly 50-50 mix. Dipped the, this is, the big pieces are the cobia. The smaller pieces are the emerald snapper. And the medium pieces will be the um, momo or the uh, uh, parrotfish. So you can see we're frying them up right now. So we're going to keep busy on this. Our temperature, I try in coconut oil, so I don't get the temperature above like 300, 275 to 300 is what I cook in. And it may get 325 sometimes, but I don't really get up 375 like they do with a lot of oils. So I think that makes the oil overcook. And coconut should never go rancid. It's good for shelf life of about two to five years. All the other corn oils and and uh, not olive oil. Olive oil is a uh, good oil too. It's a medium chain triglyceride, by the way, chemically. And so is coconut. So your liver loves those. Your liver hates all the other oils. Canola oil causes inflammation. You don't want any of that funky stuff. So stick with coconut or olive 
coconut costs less. That's why I buy it, and it's really good. So never had a problem. Ooh, and so we're going to keep uh, rolling these bad boys into the flour and get them lined up and ready to drop into the oil as soon as this batch is done. And we will be back with more. My paradise on the Italian island. Yeah, baby. Bye for now. Oh, the other thing we're doing, we're uh, doing some french fries over here. And then uh, then we'll do some, uh, probably some corn for like a veggie. We don't have a lot of veg. There is vegetables here in the Philippines, but because we're only here for a day or two and then we got to go back to uh, working on the boat, um, we don't keep them because they'll go bad. And uh, we don't like them waste our money <laughs> so anyway here we are and my wife has some kind of a fish head concoction she put a bunch of salt on it and stuff and i don't know what else they put soy sauce and who knows what but we may take a peek at that too whoa we just heard thunder can you hear it probably not but yeah thunder so anyway we're gonna have a fish fry during the rainstorm bye for, for now all right, everybody. Well, that's where we are so far in getting these bad boys cooked up, and we're going to drop in another load here. Some of this is, uh, I think this is the, oh, this is a parrotfish here. Momo, right here. Drop it in, baby. Oh, yeah. Actually, I'm going to have to do it, do this with two hands. This piece here, I think, is a Momo, too. You can feel them, they're kind of a, like a, I don't know, they've got a special feel to them. Another one, drop it in on this side. These are done too, honey? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to cut some of these down because these are kind of big for that frying pan. That's a cobia, I think. Uh, we got some cobia already in here. And some, he's not, so I'm trying to put these thicker pieces in with the thicker pieces so they'll all kind of cook up at the same time so you know it's good at looking and pointing the camera simultaneously but there we go they're cooking these are done uh we got these ones here to go like i said i'm gonna cut these big ones in half here so i gotta do that and this guy here cut him in half and then we'll be back with more and then I, I told you what I did here. I put some mayo in here, some soy sauce, and some teriyaki sauce. And I don't know. I don't know what it's going to taste like, but I'll let you know. It's an experiment. So we're cooking up a storm, and we'll be back with more. Mm, boy, there's a basket of fish right there. All right, back everybody. Now. I think we're ready to take out the next to the last batch. We still got that batch to go. And I'll go put my splash guard on there, and I'm going to scoop these guys out, and hopefully they don't fall off, because that's pretty, pretty tall, pretty tall pile there. Oh, you didn't see that, did you? You didn't see me scooping them up. Yeah, I'm watching what I'm doing, but I'm not watching what I'm videoing, so beware. Right, here's one more. See, when where the bubbles come up, you know there's one more in there, so you'll never, never lose one watch the bubbles there we go okay no more major bubbles so now we're going to throw in this next batch over there over there put this on top of here Boom. and start dropping these bad boys in but that's going to take i've actually got to pick this up and get it closer here because i don't want to drop them halfway like a little bomb falling from the sky so we'll be back with more cooking up a storm it's fish fries and corn a southern delight all right, right everybody we got all our cooking done we got our fries we got our fish we got our corn like i said it's a southern style meal and i just already bit into there and i thought oh i forgot to youtube this so anyway i think this this is cobia this i think is momo this i think is the uh, Emerald Snapper. So I just bit into that, and that was good. And I don't know if I'll bite in, because I mean, I may be wrong on any of these. Except the cobia. The cobia is the big piece, because he was a big fish. So, anyway, it's delicious. You want to try a bite, honey? 
Go for it. Tell me what you think. She hasn't yeah. been in him. She's going for COVID. Are you going to put any dip on it, or are you going straight up fish? Yeah, yeah. And it's how? Good. It's good? You want to try the other fish? See if you can tell any difference? Yeah, that's a, I think that's the snapper. So that was the cobia. This is the snapper. What do you think? Good too. Any different? I like the cobia more. Okay. And then I think you got the momo here. Yeah, that looks like a momo. Okay. So let's try that. Or the parrotfish. That's usually my favorite. What do you think? You have any? Well, which one is? I like more uh, the apple? movie. There's and then number two? Apple. What's number two? This one. The and then the third is the snapper. Okay. Well, that's kind of the way I would kind of rate things too. Probably I'm, I might switch the cobia and the uh, uh, birdfish. However, I might not. <laughs> so it's a tough it's a tough uh, choice here. But we did make some tartar sauce with some mayo and pickle relish. You know the sweet relish, some ginger, and I think that's about it. I would like to put a little, maybe a little honey in there, maybe, but. I got some honey, but I think it's fake, so I'm not going to put it in, in there. We made some cocktail sauce with ketchup and wasabi, and you can buy that at SM, the wasabi. You can buy the pickle relish at, at, at SM, too, but if you ask the pe people there, they don't know because pickle relish. Well, actually, they might know. Filipinos, I think they know what pickle relish is. I don't think they eat it, but they know what it is. So uh, the wasabi, though, if you ask them, they don't know what you're talking about, but just go to the international section and look around and you'll find it but just yeah just ketchup and wasabi is uh you know shrimp cocktail sauce like in the u.s and maybe other parts of the world i don't know and uh tartar sauce at stumble in here at the restaurant here they make a different tartar herder sauce and it's really good too but i don't know their ingredients i think i've asked them but i just never remembered it but anyway yeehaw we're eating up storm bye for now